think I'd try this a new way I'm gonna show you the tricks that I know I'm getting tired of talking And I need more of a show right now Hey everyone, it's Emily. Today I am super excited to share with you 10 genius ways that you can make pillow covers for under $5. We are making all different shapes and sizes of pillow covers. We're using all different types of material for this and different products. That way you can do it and you can make them on a budget. I'm gonna have you kind of think outside the box when you're making these pillow covers too because the next time you're at the store, I want you to go to the kitchen and bath aisle, whether you're in Target, Home Goods, TJ Maxx, uh, let's see, the grocery store of all places. I know you're probably thinking, what on earth are you thinking, lady? I promise you, you're gonna find some really unique designs and colors and fabrics through the kitchen towels, the fabric napkins, and the placemats. Believe it or not, those actually make really beautiful pillow covers. And a lot of the time, you don't have to do any cutting or anything, you can just sew it, glue it, or stitch it together. So with that, I hope you guys are excited for today's video. Give it a thumbs up if you're excited for it. Share it with your friends, and of course, tag me on Instagram if you decide to make any of these, and let's go ahead and get started. So for this first pillow cover, I'm going to be using this kitchen towel that I got for 50% off at Hobby Lobby. And I love this because of the fringe detail on it. So what I ended up doing was making around 11 and a half and I'm going to fold it so the pretty side is on the inside. So you're going to see the um, seam on the outside from the kitchen towel. And all I'm going to do here is just pin the seams together that are already there. Now for this, you can sew this, you can use a fabric fuse tape if you like, hot, fabric hot glue, I'll have a few products linked in the description box below. I decided to just sew this one together. I'm going to show you different ways of course throughout the entire video. And whenever you're sewing, you're going to want to make sure you back stitch just a little bit at the front and at the end of your, um, uh, your seam that you're making. So uh, you can see as I just kind of go down the line, and this doesn't have to be 100% perfect because this is the outside or the inside of the pillow that makes sense so once I did that I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side I'm not touching any of the middle of this so you're just basically gonna get a uh, needle and thread and thread this together if you don't have a sewing machine and then go ahead and turn it inside out that way you'll see the pretty side and of course you can add a seam to the top I don't find it necessary and now you have a really pretty fringed pillow cover and you can do this different ways if you want you can do it the other way so I'm just gonna stuff one of my Christmas pillows inside of this and then just get it all tacked down now I will say with this one I didn't cut off the other fringe so you could kind of see a couple of the lumps but if that doesn't bother you it's not a big deal but this is the way it looks and I think it's adorable for two dollars and fifty cents And I inserts are 20 by 20, so my pillow cover will be 22 by 22, and you'll see why, because I ended up fraying part of the edges on it, and I wanted to make sure I gave myself enough room to do that. So the one piece is 22 by 22. The next piece I'm going to make about four inches longer because I'm not using a zipper on this pillow. It's going to be opening up from a flap on the back, basically an overlap. Um, it's really easy to do and it's a way to do it without having to buy a um, zipper. I don't have any of those on hand. I've had this fabric for bleached for about six months now and I'm finally getting around to using it. So I'm really excited. Then I just fold that flap in half and cut that and that'll be the backing. So now for the fun part, we're going to start painting our design onto our pillow cover. Don't be intimidated. It's really easy. I got some painter's tape. Um, if you have thinner painter's tape, that'll work also. Um, I only have thick. So again, using what I have on hand, I started playing with the design. I wanted one thick stripe going up and down and then some smaller ones. And then we're going to add a few more details in. So I had some black fabric paint that on. I will say I wish I would have done a little lighter touch on the black paint, not so thick. Um, I actually like it, the white fabric seeing through it, but this is all personal preference. So after I got done with that, I took off um, part of the paint and I realized, oh yeah, my lines weren't going all the way across. <laughs> so 
um, I needed to fix that. So before I pulled off any more paint, I kind of realized what I was happening here. I added a little bit more fabric paint and to keep the lines super straight, I left the, um, the tape on there. So you can just work it as you go. Again, you don't have to do thick stripes like I am. It's completely up to you. You could put a saying on this if you want to for seasonal, for summer's coming up. You can, there's lots of things that you can do here. And I'm just adding a little bit more and then I got my detail brush and just made sure to match up those lines really nicely. Works really well. If you're gonna do long areas, definitely use tape, but this is just fixing it as you can see here. So I know it's not looking that pretty yet. Once I allowed that to dry fully, I went in with my um, hard ruler again and I took the other tip of the charcoal paint pen from Arteza uh, and then I um, kept it on a side angle and I widened that strip. I couldn't find any of my small washi tape or anything so I was doing it by hand and I was trying to get the same uh, texture here so I wanted not a super thin line but I basically doubled the line if that makes sense so once I put a few of those on the board you'll see me go in with a lighter paint pen it actually looks white but it's not it comes off a little bit more of a tan color which I really like and if you run it through the black um, fabric paint then it actually darkens it so just keep that in mind um, you might need to like just Make sure you don't overlap it but i really like the way this came together i will leave the supplies i use down in the description box below in case you want to get any of them for yourselves but i am such a fan of these fabric paint pens from arteza i'm really happy this isn't sponsored or anything i just really really like these a lot So now that the front of the pillow is all dried, I'm laying out my back pieces here and you want to make sure that you sew the end seam because that is going to be open. And so all I do is I fold it over and then I'm just gonna run a seam all the way down and that ensures that it's not gonna fray when I wash it because yeah, it's gonna be washed and everything over the course of the time. So you can see how the first one's done. I'm trying to figure out which way I had my pattern going. And then the second one is done here. So now we are going to basically pin all around the edge, that way nothing moves on us. And then we're going to sew all the way around all four corners. But I ended up actually only sewing three of the corners and I left one open and you'll see why here in a second. Most of you, if you don't want a frayed edge, you're going to sew all four corners. I left the one corner open because I decided to fray one edge and give it a different detail. So I went ahead and pinned it and then I sewed it front facing. So I'm not gonna turn it inside out or anything for this. And went all the way down, leaving about a good inch and a half or so. And then I'm going to pull those threads out and fray the edge. And I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. This is really popular right now. I've been seeing it a lot of places like uh, McGee & Co has it. Target has a few like these. I really like this design. And this took me a little bit longer because I had a couple edges to do, but just put on a good show or something and tear out all the little edges. And you can see how cool this looks. I am so happy with this pillow. This will easily go for 30 to 40 bucks on Etsy. So if you want to sell this, you totally could. I'm just happy I made it for two bucks. 
For this DIY pillow cover, I grabbed this placemat from Hobby Lobby. I thought it was super cute because it has the tassels already on it. Now you could get two of these and just sew them together, but I didn't grab two, I only grabbed one. So I used some leftover um, drop cloth material and just sewed it together to make the outside um, basically like a pocket pillow. And we're gonna go over that later on in the video, so don't worry. Um, but if you have a zipper, you can of course add a zipper, but I'm gonna go all the way around. So I'm gonna put a seam on all four of these sides. Now the most important part here is that make sure you put the pretty sides together, of course, and make sure since these have tassels that you tuck that tassel in just enough to where you can sew, but it doesn't attach to the tassel because you want that tassel to look beautiful on the outside of the pillow cover when we get done sewing. So this is how it looks, pretty ordinary, and then we're gonna turn it inside out just like the other one. And again, you can use two um, placemats for this and just fuse it all together if you want to with a pillow insert inside of it, or you could add a zipper to it if you want to, but see how I tucked those in? And I only had one where I got a little bit of the tassels connected, but other than that, it looks absolutely adorable. It's a smaller lumbar pillow, and for $2.50, yes please. So I promise not everything is from Hobby Lobby. I just happened to find a lot of cute kitchen towels and stuff there, so I wanted to make sure I shared those with you. So this um, towel is a little bit larger than the other ones, and it actually fits an Ikea lumbar pillow insert perfectly inside of it. So now you can just sew it all the way around or glue it all the way around and insert if you want to. I actually found a zipper in my um, sewing um, stuff, so it's not the largest one, but it ended up working. It's only like a nine inch and I needed probably a good 11 or 12, but that's okay. So what I ended up doing was, of course, um, putting the ugly side on the outside, that way the pretty side's on the inside. And I went ahead and went all the way around the two sides. I didn't do the top. So I did the one short side, the long bottom side with the seam, and then the other short side, I went ahead and just sewed in the um, zipper and I didn't have, I ran out of string that matched, so excuse the white string, okay? Nobody's gonna see it, okay? <laughs> but once you get that turned all the way in, this is the insert I'm using from Ikea, and it looks awesome. I do need to steam it though, I forgot to do that. Machine, fusing tape, glue gun, or fabric glue, your choice. So this is what the pillow cover looked like when I used the fabric glue on it. And it worked fine, but you can see how large the back is that is open because I'm using a 20 by 20 insert. And it's just too large to actually stay on the pillow itself. So I'm just using this scrap piece of white fabric that I folded the ends on and then sewed that down. And then I'm gonna be doing the same thing, just fold and tucking the bottom end as well as the top and sewing those across. And I will show you how to do that in a second. And then I will be sewing those all the way across and then down each of the sides all the way down to the bottom, leaving just the bottom flap open. And that'll be how we create our pocket pillow. It's pretty simple, it's basic. So I start by just folding the one side over and then folding it over again. And then I set my stitch down and then I will go forward and do a back stitch just to lock that in place. And I will do a single stitch all the way down each of the sides. The same thing I did to the other two sides. Once you have that finished, everything should uh, line up pretty well here. Now, um, just to double check, see how I had the fabric glue still a little bit on there. I'm just gonna be adjusting this to the way I want it. And then I'm gonna be folding over those two seams and then I'm going to sew over those and connect those two that way. Now that that looks the way I wanted it to connected, I am going to be lining up the edge pieces and then I will be sewing from top to bottom down this way as well, connecting the two sides. So we are starting to enclose the case now of our pocket pillow. And again, go all the way down to the bottom. There is no need to go um, on the bottom side because it's already um, sealed. There's no reason to. See how um, the bottom fabric underlays underneath the top fabric? I want it to make that pocket so that it stays tucked under after we um, stuff the pillow.
This is what your pillow cover should look like. It is completely sealed on all the sides, just leaving that little opening there. That way we can stuff our pillow inside, makes it easy to wash it anytime you need to or to change it out for the different seasons. And it's just a really easy way to make a pillow cover. Um, like I said, this is made out of a kitchen towel for $3. up with the lines here and then I'm going to fold it over this way and I want it to overlap because this is going to create that pocket for our pillow to be inserted that way we can take this off and wash it which is very important if you have kiddos the way I do so I'm gonna I have a 20 by 20 insert you can use an 18 by 18 um, cover then for it that way it will be nice and tight on your pillow but I like my pillows to be slightly loose, um, not too snug. So I'll do this almost 20 inches. Um, so I'm going to measure this down. This is going to, right now it's at 19. So I'm going to do 19 and a half. I have 20 and a half inches, which is perfect because I'm going to go sew in half an inch, which will create that to be about 19 and a half, 19 and a half, which is perfect for me. Now that the two sides are pinned, it's perfect because now I'm going to sew down this side of the seam. So I'm going to put a seam all the way down here and that's going to lock that in so we have a nice pretty side on the outside of our pillow. And I'm also going to put a seam down this as well. If you do not have a sewing machine, you can use fabric glue. You can use um, Sure Bonders fabric glue if you want to. You can use fuse tape. You can use uh, fabric tack, whatever you have on hand. So after I get those sewn, those will look basically like this. And then we're going to sew down the two open sides and our pillow will be done. And when you start to sew, you're gonna sew down and then you're gonna back stitch and then sew forward. Here's our pillow right here. Now we just need to sew the end pieces that are open with the, the ones that I have the needles on. This again, I'm gonna keep it right around the half inch mark. Start, back stitch, and keep going. And just like that, we have a pocket pillow. You're just gonna stuff your pillow right inside of there. It'll cover up and look how beautiful it looks. For the next DIY pillow, we are going to be making a pocket pillow. Really easy, you're gonna measure out some fabric that will match the size of your insert. And with this, I'm just going to fold it over onto itself with the ugly side being on the outside and I'm going to sew the two sides of it. And then you can always sew down this, um, the seams as well if you need to, but it's done. Like, it's really easy. You guys saw me sew the other ones. This one, I'm gonna be using these pom-poms from um, Hobby Lobby. They're basically a dollar when they're on sale and I'm gonna be using the Shervander fabric glue, which works awesome works really really well so these are the medium size um, pom-poms and i'm just adding a little bit of hot glue the fabric type and then just pressing that on you don't need very much and i does not bleed through to the other side at least with this drop cloth material it did not um, and i've also used this on an ikea insert and didn't bleed through either so
And once again, I forgot to steam this fabric before I put all these pom-poms on, but it looks really cute. It's a smaller lumbar pillow, like the same size as the placemat, and I think it's adorable. For the next pillow, I got this fabric from Walmart, and I'm going to be making a faux leather pillow. This isn't really faux leather, I don't think anyways, but it was really pliable, and I liked it. And again, it was really inexpensive. I put a pillow insert on there that for the size that I needed, and then I managed to cut that out. And it's measuring about 19 and a half by 19 and a half, which was good. And then I put, of course, my pillow insert in on it. That way I know I have enough room for a seam on the side. Always do that. So here I am just going to, going to use my pins to uh, hold down the fabric. That way I can put my stitch down and do that on both ends. And then I'm going to use um, some pins and also um, pin down the zipper. And then I also sewed it onto the other side as well. And now I'm going to just sew the two sides. I'm not sewing the top of the pillow because the fabric, I liked the way if you were to karate chop your pillow, it, the way it looked and indented. So I didn't want to seam on the top. I wanted just it to fold over. So that's all I did. I just folded the material over and left it like that and then just sewed the sides on. I wasn't sure how easy this fabric was going to be to work with, but it was thin enough to where it sewed just fine. I didn't have to adjust anything. For the pillow cover, I'm going to be using this napkin that I got from uh, Hobby Lobby. It was $3, but I used a 50% off coupon, so it's only $1.50, which is great. So you take two napkins and then glue all the way around or sew them all the way around, but I want this to be a cover. So I am going to use this as the backing of it. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna sew this opposite of what I would normally do. Normally, I would just sew and then fold it inside out, but I don't, well I want the fringe to show. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my edging of my backing and I'm just gonna fold it under, and then I'm going to place it on my um, napkin basically, and then I'm gonna sew down that seam, and then this will be the back, and this will be the pretty front, okay? Over the clouds, across the ocean, I was trying to hide from my emotions, but now they're here to confront. I will be using the Vigdis pillow cover from Ikea and I've had this for quite some time as you can tell it's quite wrinkly so I ironed it out a little bit and then I'm taking a piece of thin cardboard and putting that at the very top of it and you're going to work around this because we don't want to glue the other layer to it. I'll be taking this trim that I got from Hobby Lobby and I am going to be taking that fabric tack glue and just doing a small layer on the top rim of this and um, pushing that down that way it adheres and like I said this is really easy you can do whatever pattern that you would like I gave a quite a good layer of the fabric tack glue because this trim is pretty thick and I wanted to make sure that it holds up over time So now I'm going to start with the side details. I took my fabric um, measuring board and put that on the side, that way I could gauge where exactly I wanted my um, shape to go. I decided to do a V in this and I added a little bit of glue in between that, that way that would hold together since I'm not cutting my ribbon here. And then um, I went down every 7 inches and then my V would be about every 3.5. And then I also went in from the sides um, four and a half inches. So you're going to want two measuring tapes for this if you can, um, just to hold it out so you can see 
um, how it's holding up there. That way I get my V's and it's not too zigzaggy looking and everything is symmetrical. That is what you want. So measure twice, glue once. So now that I have the one side done, before I move on to the next one, I'm going to work on the tassels. So in that package with the cream and white tassel trim, it also came black. And so I thought I would put this to use. I cut off three and then pulled the strings together and tied them all and then pulled it taunt. It worked out really well. I don't know how else to explain it, but it works really easy. If you have the right type of uh, fabric or tassel trim material definitely do that i did not the only thing i have is yarn and that wouldn't look right with the trim on this this worked really nice so they are a little bit small but i still think it's a nice detail so what i went ahead and did and just took a pulled that back added a little bit of bead of glue and then blocked that in there and then you'll just cut it off and just press it on making sure it's there and then you have little tassels on the very end of your pillows this is optional, you don't have to do that, but I like the little added detail. So now I'm going to work on the second edge, and before I go all the way down, I'm going to apply my little tassel up there in the corner. Once I finished gluing on my trim, I let the pillow dry for a whole day and then I took my IKEA insert and put that into the pillow, zipped it up, and it looks so beautiful. I like how easy this project was and I'm upcycling something that I already had and it only cost me a few dollars in trim. For this DIY, I'm using another pillow cover. Um, you can find these at Hobby Lobby, Ikea, um, really inexpensive, you guys. Um, if you have one laying around that you love the color on it, you can add more to it, just like I'm doing here. I'm using the smaller pom-poms that are from Hobby Lobby, and I'm using that uh, fabric hot glue from Sherbonder, and I'm just uh, making a cute little design with my pom-poms. You can do whatever you want. You can use ribbon, you can use um, tassels or the pom-poms or whatever else. I'm just working out a pattern here. You can do what works for you. I started by doing some triangles and then I wanted to eventually make them into diamond shapes, but I didn't end up having enough of the small little pom-poms. So I ended up just kind of going with the flow with this um, like design and I like it. Um, you'll kind of see how it unfolds. So just get creative. You don't have to do as many as I did. You can do a completely different look to it. So it's really, just really fun to add these little <laughs> pom-poms onto the pillow. thought it would actually be a really cute detail to take the larger pom-poms and start alternating them between the triangles and the diamond shape and I really like the way this ends up looking. I think in the um, end, I would have just done the alternating pom-poms. So if you want a really simple DIY pillow, just do that. You don't have to do the triangles or the diamond shape, but overall it's really cute. 
a little glue gun hack for you is just to add a little dab of hot glue on there you guys taught me this and then it will glue the two sticks together and then they don't um, end up uh, running out so next I took some fringe that I actually got off of Amazon that I had left over and I'm just running that down the seam of the pillow so that way it will show on both sides whichever way the pillow is going to be and I'm just doing about two or three inches at a time and then pushing that trim down into the hot glue. I didn't burn myself at all and my fingers might be numb to it because I work with it so much but um, I don't find that the high temp is too hot for me unless I'm just holding my fingers there but the one side came together really nicely and now we need to finish off the other side so I'm just going to repeat that process and this is how the pillow came out. you lots of different ideas on ways that you can make pillow covers and I hope you all enjoyed today's video. You'll have to let me know which pillow cover was your favorite and which one you would like to recreate. I hope you guys have fun shopping for a lot of these items and I can't wait to see some of your guys' work. So I hope you guys have an amazing day. Be sure to check out my last few videos. They're here on the screen and also in the description box below for even more ideas. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed today's video and want to see more DIY and decorating videos here. And with that, I'll see you all in the next one. I won't stop like the others I will